Hey. Um, for anybody who doesn't already know me or hasn't seen one of my videos before, my name is Ness and I am the Massachusetts West Region Self-Advocacy Coordinator. Every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. I'll be posting a live video talking about one of your human rights. And today I'm going to be talking about the right to be free from abuse. Um, but before I get started, I want to give a quick content warning. A little later in my talk, I'm going to really briefly describe and define some different types of abuse. And then after that, I'm going to describe some ways one might feel if they were abused. And those can be really hard things to hear. They can bring up a lot of emotions for anybody, and they can be really triggering to folks who have experienced abuse. Um, so just be aware of that and take care of yourself. Um, and with that, let's get started. Um, so you have a right to be free from abuse in all its forms. And like other human rights, it doesn't matter who you are, what race you are, where you're from, if you're disabled or able-bodied, um, what gender you are, what your sexuality is, it doesn't matter. Everybody has a right to be free of abuse in all its forms. Um, but what is abuse? The Gale Encyclopedia of Medicine says abuse is defined as any action that intentionally harms another person. Um, but abuse is usually thought of as taking place in the context of relationships. For instance, parents abusing a child or a person abusing their spouse or romantic partner or a teacher, a caregiver, or a staff person abusing someone they work with or care for. That doesn't mean that if someone hurts you outside of a relationship, like a stranger or a peer hurts you, that it's okay. It's just called something a little different under US law. For instance, if a peer, um, one of your friends or a stranger yells at you, um, really like yells obscene or hurtful things at you, it's usually called harassment. But if a caregiver yells obscene or hurtful things at you, it's usually called verbal abuse. Um, similarly, if um, one of your peers or a stranger hits you or physically hurts you, it might be called assault. But if um, someone who's supposed to be taking care of you physically hurts you or hits you, it would usually be called physical abuse. Um, but all of these behaviors, no matter the context or who does them, are still wrong and are still illegal. Um, it is your right to be free from being treated poorly um, by anyone. There are many different types of abuse. Um, some of these types are physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal and emotional abuse, and financial abuse. Physical abuse is things like hitting you, kicking you, or physically hurting you. Um, it also includes improperly or unnecessarily restraining you. So you have the right to not be physically hurt by other people. Um, sexual abuse is touching you sexually, um, like on your genitals, on your butt, or on your breasts without your permission. Sometimes you might give a caregiver permission to touch you in these places for medical or personal care reasons. But if you do not give permission, it is not okay for them to touch you. And you can also revoke or take away your permission at any time. So if someone who usually helps you in the bathroom, um, you hear them saying something that scares you or something like that, and you decide you don't want them helping you in the bathroom anymore, you have the right to say that and have it be respected. Um, this also includes in romantic relationships and even marriages. It's not okay for anybody, even if you're married to them, to touch you sexually without your permission. Um, verbal abuse is things like hurtful words, screaming at you, insulting you, putting you down, or making fun of you. And emotional abuse is manipulating your emotions or hurting your feelings on purpose, which includes verbal abuse, yelling at you hurts your feelings on purpose. Um, but it also includes other things like lying to you or tricking you into doing things or making you feel crazy by denying things happen the way you remember them. Um, you have the right to be treated kindly and respectfully. Um, and the last kind of abuse I'm going to describe is financial abuse. Um, financial abuse is a way of controlling a person's ability to acquire, 
use and maintain their own money. Um, this might look like taking your money or lying to you about how much money is in your account um, or not letting you use the money you've earned in the way you want to use it. Even if you have a rep payee or a guardian, you have the right to know how much money you have and you have the right to have choice and control in how your money is used. So now that I've described some of the different types of abuse, I am going to talk a little bit about what you can do if um, you're being abused or you feel like you're being abused um, and or if you feel like your rights are being disrespected. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to suggest is that you talk to someone who you trust. One way that um, in our country that you're um, that they try to protect your right to be free from abuse is with something called mandated reporters. Um, a mandated reporter is anybody who works in education, any teacher, um, and anybody who works in any kind of social or human services. So um, any direct care staff, um, also their supervisors, any social workers, therapists, counselors, um, anybody like that um, is a mandated reporter automatically through their job. And um, that means that if they see someone being abused or if they suspect that someone is being abused, um, particularly someone who's a child, someone who's a person who has a disability or someone who's a senior, um, if they see anybody in any of those groups being harmed or think somebody in one of those groups might be being harmed, it is um, their legal obligation to report it. That means I'm a mandated reporter through my job. So if I see someone with a disability um, being abused, I legally have to call DPPC and tell them I could get in trouble if I don't. Um, so that's just something to know when you're considering who to talk to if you feel that you're being hurt. Um, you also can report the abuse yourself. Um, and the, the group you'll report to sort of depends on who you are. Um, if you're a person with a disability over 18 in Massachusetts, you can report it to the Disabled Persons Protection Commission or DPPC. If you're a child under the age of 18 in Massachusetts, you can report to the Department of Children and Families or DCF. Um, and then what happens when you report is first, um, based on the information that you give in the report, usually over the phone, um, they'll decide if they need to investigate it or not. Um, sometimes there isn't enough information to investigate. For instance, if you're not able to give them a name, um, and then um, if they decide that they need to investigate, if they have enough information to investigate, um, they will do an investigation, which often involves things like um, going to the location where the abuse happened, like the home, usually unannounced, so people don't have time to prepare, um, or talking to people who know the person who might have been harmed or the person who was accused of doing the harm. Um, and then if they the investigation finds that the abuse did happen, the person was being abused, um, a variety of things might happen, including disciplinary action. If the person who did it was a caregiver, they might lose their job or um, be moved into a different job. Um, sometimes there are also criminal charges. Or if the state thinks that um, that people are in imminent danger of continuing to be harmed, um, they might be removed from the situation um, on an emergency basis. For instance, if a child is being severely abused in their home, um, they might be placed in an emergency foster care placement just to keep them physically safe. Um, and then, um, so sometimes there are also criminal charges because it's against the law to abuse folks. Um, but unfortunately, only about 10 to 15 percent of cases of abuse of folks with disabilities result in criminal charges. Um, and I say unfortunately, um, not because I love the idea of calling the police or sending people to jail, but because if there are no criminal charges, the system doesn't um, have good, previously to now, the system didn't have good ways to keep track of folks who had been abusive. So someone could have committed an act of abuse um, when working in a group home for one agency, gotten fired, and the system wouldn't follow them, wouldn't track them. So they could then apply to work in a similar role in, a different agency which could um, be unsafe for the folks um, who get services there. Um, but recently that changed, at least in Massachusetts, something, um, a law was passed called Nikki's Law, 
which um, creates an abuse registry. So um, anybody who um, has is um, accused of being abusive and then has that substantiated through the investigation process um, will have their name in that registry. And then employers, when they're looking to hire people on to work with folks who have disabilities, they have to check that registry. Um, so that is hopefully going to keep people a little bit safer. Um, another way that the state government is going to try to protect um, y'all's, everyone's right to be free from abuse. Um, so I really wanted to talk about the right to be free from abuse today because it's a really important right to me. Um, and one of the reasons that I feel that this right is so important is because sometimes folks who have experienced abuse can feel hurt by it long after the abuse has stopped happening. Um, and some of the ways that folks might still feel hurt after the abuse has stopped happening um, include things like um, feeling numb or feeling a little bit disconnected from the world around them um, or wanting to feel numb. And so sometimes doing drugs or using alcohol to try to escape hard feelings. Um, it can also result in feeling really, really sad or feeling really, really angry, including um, feeling angry at other people, whether or not they committed the abuse um, or wanting to be hurtful, to feel powerful and in control. Um, it can also mean being angry at yourself and sometimes even hurting yourself. Um, it can also mean things like having trouble concentrating or making decisions, um, having bad memories of the abuse come up unexpectedly, um, or flashbacks or nightmares can happen. Um, and it can also include feelings of continuing to be unsafe um, or expecting people to harm you or really having to feel like you have to be on edge and on the lookout for people who might want to harm you. Um, and another way you might feel is guilty or ashamed. Um, and some people um, end up feeling like it was their fault what happened to them. And um, it is never your fault if you're abused. It's always the person who's hurt you fault. Um, and that's really important to me that everyone knows that. Um, another thing that's important to know about the feelings folks might have if they've been abused um, are that some people actually um, feel sadder after they escape the abuse or after the abusive person is no longer in their life. Because sometimes when folks are being abused, um, their minds and bodies kind of go into a survival mode um, and aren't processing really deeply the things that are happening. And once the body is no longer in survival mode, they're able to process it and the emotions of what happened to them um, may flood them and feel like they're really intense. Um, it's also normal to not have any of these things happen. Um, if you've been abused and that doesn't mean that what happened to you was okay or didn't happen or wasn't real. It's just that everybody reacts to things differently. But if you do have a lot of feelings following abuse or you feel like you need help, there are a lot of ways that you can get help. Um, some people find it helpful to talk to a therapist. Um, other people might find it helpful to talk to a spiritual or re religious leader that they connect with. Um, and some folks also can find it really helpful to talk to other people who've been through similar things. Um, but I do want to say that it's harder to heal from abuse if you're still being hurt, um, which is why um, reporting it can be helpful or finding other ways to get out of the situation can be really helpful. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching this. I'm going to drop some resources in the comments, including the numbers you can call to report abuse. As usual, free, feel free to comment here or message me if you have any questions about this right or about any other human rights ideas for future topics. Um, if you need support or if you just want to say hi. Um, also, don't forget to tune in next week, Wednesday at 530 for my next human rights talk and check this page often as we post new content five days a week. Have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend and stay safe out there.